Thanks, guys. I am Mary McGaw, and I am so excited to be here. I am the engineering manager for the Windows Forms team. I've got short brown hair, and I'm wearing a bright blue t-shirt with the Microsoft logo that you can't see. And my partner in crime here is Klaus. Yeah, I'm Klaus. I'm a dev on the WinForms team. Um, I'm a little bit taller than Mary, slightly. Um, I have whatever hair color I have. What, what is it? like? Brown. Brown. I would say brown, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so th that's, that's about me. And we're here to tell you about some of the cool modern things that we're able to do with WinForms development in .NET 9. So I'm going to break down our agenda into kind of four main chunks of stuff that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some of the highlights, the new and exciting things that we've added to WinForms and kind of our focus that we've been, um, the, the North Stars that we've been looking at as we've been working in WinForms. Then we're going to get to a little bit more of a serious mode where we talk about security, because security is a number one thing here at Microsoft, and it's important for WinForms as well. Finally, we're going to get into, or next, we're going to get into some of, I think, the most exciting new developments in WinForms, and that's the simplicity in which we can do asynchronous development. And finally, a quick wrap up and a mind-bogglingly long list of resources for you to use as you're developing your WinForms applications and taking advantage of the modern new stuff. So to start with taking a look at what's new in WinForms for .NET 9, I want to talk about some of the key focus areas that we've always been kind of thinking about. First of all is our community-driven focus. We are a vibrant community in GitHub right now. The community has been driving features from the very first PR that we ever took in WinForms back on stage for .NET Core 3.1. Thanks, Scott, for uh, merging that one without telling me. That, or was, that was the second one. That was good. That was um, good, yes. And in .NET 9, we've added the um, folder browser dialogues multi-select option. We've done a lot of nullability work as driven by the community and, and much, much more. As I mentioned a moment ago, though, the security focus is something that has been across all of libraries and you know, all of the other parts of .NET. And WinForms is a huge piece of that. For us, binary formatter removal has really made us do some internal changes that may not be as visible to the outside world, but allow us to continue working in a world where a binary formatter is no longer present. Yes, I mean, we have resource files, and the binary formatter was always a big dependency on that. And um, resource files are not going away in WinForms, nope. em right? Embedded resources are here to stay. Of course, we've got a performance focus. That's something that really makes WinForms and Core stand out, or WinForms and .NET stand out from .NET framework. We're able to take advantage of all of the modern C-sharp language features that enable us to improve performance. We've improved our interop. Um, as a matter of fact, we've migrated most of our libraries to um, a modern interop tool called CSWin32 that does code generation for all of our interop. And the advantage there, the big thing there, is that now with it being code generated, we know that it's accurate, consistent, and performant all the way across the board. Um, everybody likes UI enhancements, and this release has been no different than any other release. Uh, one of my personal little favorites, I know it's tiny, but um, system.drawing now has a uh, rounded rectangle and the ability to do image formats, like tr convert an image to black and white or put a green cast over it. It's funny, right? Because this is a feature that has been requested like for the last 15 years, and it's such a little thing, but then um, it really made an impact already. Oh, yeah, and the reason that we were able to do that, if we go back to modern interop, because CSWin32 makes it easy for us to consume Windows APIs, Win32 APIs, uh, the ones that maybe we didn't in the past, we're able to pull in new things from GDI, GDI Plus, and make system drawing that much more robust. Oh, and you know what? We have forgotten one thing to, to mention. We also did something for Visual Basic. And that was? And we had a couple of uh, updates for the project system. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we also had 
quite recently a blog post about that. Well, it's, it's a little bit longer ago already. Right. But um, it's definitely worth checking that out because Visual Basic is still 20% yes. ish of WinForms customers, even in the .NET land. So we want to make sure that our .NET, Visual Basic .NET customers are still able to be supported. And then, of course, for me, like I said, the most exciting work that we've been doing is in the asynchronous support because the world has changed from when WinForms was created. It's changed into an asynchronous sort of environment, and we need to be able to work with that. All right. I'm going to hand it over now to Klaus for a demo about WinForms getting a glow up, as the kids would like to call it, usually. But some cool stuff we've done in WinForms. So I hope I hope I hope people will like it. So um, let me start with just um, a look on the typical WinForms app as you know it. Well, it might look already a little bit different. Um, this is a photo viewer that I. <laughs> wrote this morning, um, that um, wh where I just had a couple of photos um, that, that I did the other day from, from, this, from this studio here. Um, but let me, let me show something that Ooh. is really um, that is really new and really requested a lot. And that is the, the WinForms dark mode. So to, to modernize your apps, um, it's really often all about the look and feel. Mm -hmm. And I would say that dark mode at this point almost became an accessibility issue. So I know a lot of people who are really, you know, wanted to have this, this dark mode not to be able to be blinded by bright colors. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's also, of course, a preference. So disclaimer, um, before we go into it, this is for .NET 9 still a experimental feature. And what, what that means is that when you are starting to use it, you will be flagged a little bit by the compiler and, um, and need to adjust um, your editor config setting, uh, settings to make it work. But let me show you really quick how easy it is to actually have that light mode typical WinForms app and then you know make a dark mode out of it. So um, we have the application object. And that's usually the place where we, where we always uh, set up the kind of like the base for the whole mm -hmm. application. And new in, uh, in .NET 9 is the set color mode. And what I can do with it is um, I have now the system colors enum, which gives me three options. And it's quite simple. We have the dark mode, we have classic, and then we have system. And what system does is it just takes over whatever settings you had set up for your Windows environment. So if you're using the light mode, your WinForms app at that point will be light mode. And if you do dark mode, then it will mm -hmm. be dark mode. So with this change made, uh, let me just restart it. And um, hopefully, um, we should see Ta -da. that thing already in action. Well. There's one thing, though, that you see. And of course, this black text um, on, on the item doesn't, doesn't really look like very readable now. So when you are you know, right, ramping up your apps so that they are dark mode compatible, there's, um, there's an easy way then to take those things into account. Um, in this case, we have a we have a new uh, property, which is also um, on the application object, and that is, um, is dark mode enabled. So in other words, we can do just this. And uh, let me quickly try to get this work with my notebook, which I hate, actually, to type on. So. And so if the dark mode is enabled, then we are using a rather lighter color in that, or brighter color in that regard. And now let me start that again. And we should see that now the text is still dark. Hmm. OK. So the demo gods. That's the way um, it usually works. Yeah. and. Um, 
what does it mean that this is an experimental feature, Klaus? So what that exactly means is that we have the moment you use an experimental feature in .NET per se, it's not necessarily the dark mode, then the compiler will show you an error message. And then if it does that, then there are several options that you can do. Um, there will be showing up on analyzers where you can pick that you want to have a fix inside of um, the code directly. Or if you want to have that global for your whole solution or for the whole project, then the analyzer can also set up a setting for the editor config. Um, and that was not it. Let me bring up the text uh, for that editor config so we can you know, focus on that, that, that single setting. And then um, you will see that that diagnostic that is responsible for pointing out that it is in dark mode, you can just adjust then to you know, like put your level of warnings mm -hmm. the way you want it. Like if it is an error or if it is a um, if it is silent, so it doesn't really uh, bother you at all. So this is the only thing that you need to do, and um, and yeah, so that that is the way um, you're best going to use it. Um, what's important, what we want to mention is. Um, we need feedback. That's why it's experimental, is because there's a lot of UX in WinForms, a lot of UI in WinForms, and we haven't gotten to it all. And we're wanting the feedback as well to make sure from the community that the approaches that we've taken are the approaches that, that we want moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears now and steal the show back for myself, because you know I like the attention. Uh, actually, it's because I do want to cover a pretty serious topic and an important topic, and that is the security first focus with binary format or removal. Uh, first and foremost, the number one thing for me to tell everybody is that binary formatter is unsafe. It is not something that we recommend, and we have been slowly working our way towards removing binary formatter for years. In .NET 9, the implementation code, the inbox implementation, actually is removed from the library's code and put into a separate out-of-band out of package, or an OOB package, as we like to call it. Um, and this is the final stage of the binary format or deprecation or obsolete plan. And this plan's actually been going on for quite a while. Yeah. Um, we announced it in .NET 5 where we said we definitely want to remove binary formatter because it's unsafe, because it can cause some of the um, uh, system, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, remote code execution. Thank you very much. Uh, yep, yeah, that's, that's the old age coming in. Um, so it can do system rem uh, remote code execution. It can do denial of service. It can do all sorts of things that um, if you're not super careful with it, can really cause problems and security vulnerabilities. So we decided in .NET 7 that the, all of the dependencies that could be removed have been removed. In .NET 8, it was obsoleted. And for almost all of the workloads, it was throwing exceptions by default. And the exception there, of course, was Windows Desktop, because as Klaus mentioned earlier, we use resources and we do embedded resources which use a lot of potentially binary formatter serialization. Um, in February, we announced that binary formatter was going to be pulled out of the product. And in August, that was completed. In the intervening time here, what I have to do a huge shout out to uh, the team, to Jeremy Cooney, to Adam Sitnik, to Jeff Handley, to Lonnie Tra. Uh, they really came together and pulled it out of the runtime and replaced a lot of internal WinForms implementations. So key notes to, to be aware of, um, the implementation is gone. It is removed to a package. If you depend on it, you actually have two steps that you're going to need to do. You're going to have to say, I want to use binary formatter, enable this unsafe binary formatter, and now you'll also have to add a package. Um, embedded resources, most of the time now, don't actually need binary formatter because we've done our own internal work to remove that. 
And finally, the thing I'm going to demo in just a few moments here is that we've got new analyzers that will warn you if you've inadvertently started to use binary formatter. Yeah, and when in the time where Mary set up uh, her demo, demo um, I want to want to say something to the analyzers. That is something that we really want to want to add on for .NET 10. Mm -hmm. and build in more guidance um, in general to make your WinForms code more secure. So um, there are so many places where we can use analyzers for, for this security guidance. And it's certainly something you, wanna, you, know, you are going to see uh, much more in, in the run Quite a bit of. Yeah. OK. So let me bring up my demo here. And what I've got is a .NET 8 application. And it has a form with an address control. That address control has a few fields on it. Um, and we're running it in .NET 8. And I'm going to build. And you'll see that I um, actually probably need to um, clean and rebuild. Hmm, I must have accidentally hit a space bar somewhere. Nope, that's not it. Just a second here. New line in a constant. I told you I hit a space bar. How about I do that? Yeah, that happens to me That happens all the to time. me way too often. OK, so now I'm going to build. That is much better, much happier. And now we're down to zero errors and a bunch of warnings that don't really matter. Now, if I go to my form here, and I'm going to go to my button click code. Oh, my address one went away. Let me go to my button one click. I've actually got a place here where I'm going to force binary serialization. And this is just to tell you that there are going to be places where maybe third-party components, maybe old components that you've written in VB6 or whatnot may need binary formatter. The funny thing is that we really tried hard to find, meanwhile, um, a scenario where we hit the binary formatter, but Jeremy did such a good job yep. that um, it was almost hard to, to get there. To, to get there, right. All right, so I built, I've got an error, and that error is because, uh, let me come back in here, it is because binary formatter is not supported. This is the .NET 8 obsolescence that we were talking about. So I'm going to go to my code and enable the binary formatter serialization. This is what we did in .NET 8. And of course, that run, you know, compiles, everybody's happy. But now let's change it to .NET 9 really quick. And I move it to 9. Let me save. I'm going to do a quick clean, because that always seems to make things go a little smoother. And a rebuild. And things are looking really good. And I think that might be because, oh, there they are. I've got the two errors that I was looking for. The two errors are because I've got these public properties. And the public properties, first name and special property, if I take a look at them, let me put my cursor here, let the um, help come up. It says that I do not have the serialization information set for this particular property. So I'm going to say that I want to hide it from serialization so that I am forcing it not to use binary formatter, because by default, it might. And that's not what I want. So that's where the error message comes in handy. And when I build, things are good. Things are working just fine. But remember I had that code that was using binary formatter in my form? Mm -hmm. When I hit my button at runtime, I am now getting a compiler error, or a runtime error, saying platform not supported. That's because the binary formatter implementation code was removed, and I need to come back and, say, and pull in that package. Um, to do that, let me stop my application. And let me go back to my code here. You pull in the package group, simple as that. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this how I want my app to run forever? No. 
This is unsafe and unsupported, but it will get us through the time where I need to go in and investigate how to move to system text JSON deserialization or some other custom type converters that I might have. And I'll go ahead and run. Everything is happy. And I should, um, oh, I needed to, I needed to clean because I did something in my project file. And there we go. It's all working beautifully. Now, that's the serious stuff. Binary formatter is going away. It's important that everybody's aware of it, but it's kind of like a speed bump. We're not making development faster and easier. We're making it safer. We're making people sit back and kind of pay attention. I do want to give Klaus now the wheel for the next four minutes because he's going to show us about async. In and four some, minutes, exactly. <laughs> uh, but we've got another. We've got a whole another talk where you're covering oh, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. really we, cool we, stuff. Yeah, we really need to. We, we definitely need to do more. Yeah. All right. So Klaus, take over. Okay. So um, and it's a funny motive now because it's showing a binary clock. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, really quick then, um, it's about it's about asynchronous. Um, programming in 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 WinForms, um, we had that before that we could like twenty years ago already we were able to do um, asynchronous programming and we had APIs that were starting with begin, and it's time for those to end because um, it was just it produced so much spaghetti code that nobody mm -hmm. really could use it. So and because of the of the time that we no longer have, um, let me quickly show you. Um, the essence of what we have been doing. So what you see here is a spinner control that is just like iterating through a very special font type. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, it'll show the, the color bar, yep. and it's also flashing. So and um, that is so cool because you're now writing, you're using the uh, UI thread from two different processes, from exactly. two different things that you're trying to do. Exactly. And that's not something that WinForms has ever been good at doing. Yeah. And, and, and I just want to point out by code um, how easy it is to do that. So if you are an experienced WinForms developer, you know that if you click and you double, double click, then of course the click event comes at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So when I double click, both of those things happened. And if you take a look at the code now, you see that we're awaiting in the click event the, the, the spinner to, to turn. But then in the double click at the same time, we're awaiting the color blender um, to do its job. So the way you're setting up those things that are doing you know, things in parallel, because the message queue is always running, it's like a very, very easy thing. And so now the question is, should we do? Should we skip the other demo and should directly go to that? The the kind of fun one. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move to uh, some of the applicate the real world application of a scenario where async programming is going to uh, change the world when it comes to a WinForms app. So adding this kind of capability, the asynchronous capability, to your existing line of business applications in WinForms. Take it away. Exactly. So what this is is taking the async features and then, as we said before, being able to use all those new APIs that are basically only providing their APIs in an async form. In this app, and by the way, we have another talk all that is pre-recorded, which explains in detail how this works. Um, was exactly how how to do that. So let me quickly show that. Um, I'm, th this is like um, a driver's log sample. And let me just type in a couple of stops here. Like I'm going from Duval to Monroe and then to Bellingham. And I don't have time, so I will do all kinds of. You are terrible at spelling. Yeah, but it doesn't really Whoa. matter because I'm sending it over to an LLM and getting it back. And so. It gets corrected and assisted automatically uh, while I'm working. And this counts for everything that is here on the form. And Wow. So, so all these web APIs and the, the open, API, open AI APIs, they all are asynchronous. Yes. And we're able to now, as part of the flow of a WinForms app, 
just be able to incorporate that, which is really exciting. Now, I'm going to take back over to the PowerPoint in a quick wrap up since we are just about out of time. Um, so we did our demo for async. Here's our wrap up for re and resources. We talked about one experimental feature in .NET 9, and that was the dark mode. Now, the control.invoke async that Klaus was showing with his work just a moment ago, that's not experimental. That's a, that's a real thing. Exactly. But we wanted to take it a step further. We wanted to see if maybe a form.show async and a form.show dialogue async would be something that people would take advantage of. So those two are added also as experimental features. The warning here is that all of these are still in flux and there might be some slight changes, but they're in enough state that we are able to get the feedback and want the feedback from our customers about it. So please use these, go to our GitHub repo, file the issues, submit some PRs for some of the issues. We wouldn't argue with that. Um, and, and that's our big thing with these experimental features is give us the feedback. And finally, some resources. I'll make sure that these are uh, all linked for you when you get to the presentation on YouTube. And of course, our standard get.net9. And thank you very much 